years ago, uh, one Father's Day like this uh, at Vineyard Church down the road there, the pastor asked me, bring a word for the Father's Day. And as I was seeking the Lord then, he led me to this passage in Luke chapter 15. The impression many of us have of God is that of a reluctant father. A father who we have to ask and ask before he releases anything to us. A father we have to grovel on the ground and beg and weep and cry before he releases anything. That is the image some of us have of God. That's why we pray, pray, pray. We are thinking, oh, I need to fast for 40 days. I need to go on the mountain for 90 days. I need to do this. I have to beg and beg and beg before he releases anything. Some of us are faced with issues of sickness that we have prayed again and again and nothing is happening. Some of us are faced with relationship matters that have re refused to improve. We have prayed and prayed. It seems God is unwilling or is reluctant to answer us. So we have come to certain ideas about God that are not right. They are not true. They are not biblical. They are, they, are, they, are, they are total lies. So instead of a reluctant father, I want to share with you a relentless father. It's the same father that Corey Asbury described his love as reckless. It's not really reckless, but that's the way he felt it. So instead of reckless, I want to say a relentless love, a relentless father. He said, I mean, his love is so relentless, he said there's no shadow you won't light up, no mountain, no mountain you won't climb up coming after me. God is ready to break every barrier to come to you. There's no wall it won't kick down. No lie it won't tear down coming after you. That's the God I want to share with you this morning. So I'm going to go a little further than we usually go on a Sunday morning like this. Praise God. Luke chapter 15 is a chapter of parables. But there is one theme in that entire chapter that talks about losses, it deals with losses. Luke chapter 15 started with the story of the lost sheep. Then Jesus followed it up with the story of the lost coin. And then finally, in verse 11 to 13, it talks about the lost son. So read with me in Luke chapter 15. 11 to 13. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between them. Not long after that, the young son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, look at this, and there squandered his wealth in wide living. Let's pray together. Father, the entrance of your word gives life, gives understanding to the simple. We receive your word with open heart and mind this day. Speak to each one of us in a way where we understand. Speak to every heart with clarity and perfect understanding. Come, Holy Spirit, you are the helper. Help us today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. One of the many issues people, Christians inclusive, have against God is why does he allow so much evil in our world? If truly is the Almighty, is the all-powerful, if he truly is the all-knowing, he knows all things, he, know the, he knows the end from the beginning, he has all powers to deal with every situation, every time. Why does he allow so much evil in our world? Why can't he do something about it? Listen, he will, but not yet. When the right time comes, he will. And coming to the story of the prodigal, people have wondered if the father in that story represents God. Why didn't he stop the son from going on such a trip when he knew that it is, it is not going to end well? Why did he release so much to the boy? Why did he give him so much to go with when he knows that he's going to squander everything? Why does God allow evil to happen? Why did God allow me to 
go into that, into that relationship when he knew that it was not going to end well? Why didn't he pull me back? Why didn't he prevent me? Why didn't he stop me? Why didn't he shout and scream at me? <laughs> Father Henry Nowen was a Catholic priest. He's gone to heaven now. He said something, and I'm going to be sharing a little bit from his book. In a, he wrote a book titled The Return of the Prodigal Son, The Story of Homecoming. I will encourage you, if you are looking for materials to read for the summer, put that on your list. It will bless you so much. Father Henry said, as father, God wants his children to be free, free to love. That freedom includes the possibility of their living home, going to a distant country and losing everything. The father's heart knows all the pain that will come from that choice. But look at it. But his love makes him powerless to prevent it. The love of God. True love set free. True love doesn't hold down. True love doesn't hold back. There's no fear in love. There's no fear in love. How do you become a father like this? Because of our time, three ways to a compassionate father. Number one is grief. The father knows grief. The father knows grief. Nobody grieves like God. And God has been grieving for long. You, you think it started with the Ukraine war. You think it started with the Israeli-Palestinian war. No, no, no. The father has been grieving for humanity for so long. As far back as Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 and 6, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the, of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. Look at this. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humans on the earth. And he was grieved in his heart. The father has been grieving. No, he didn't start yesterday. He has been grieving for too long. One translation put that last phrase there. He said God was deeply troubled. Turn on the TV any time, any day. There will be news of wars, of killings of pain, of tragedies, of disasters, of accident, of tornadoes, earthquakes, wickedness, of man to man. The father grieves. And listen, friends, when the father sees the foolishness of his, of, of his children, the waywardness, the stubbornness, the unseriousness, how some pain could have been averted, how some tragedies could have been prevented, the father grieves, but is too loving to hold down. Sarah, the daughter of the, the great African-American preacher, T.D. Jakes, she got pregnant at the age of 14. At the age of 14, the daughter of a bishop, a, a church leader, got pregnant at the age of 14. It's, she said in her own story, in her own world, it's, she said, my father is a wordsmith. When he opens his mouth, word just flows. He's a preacher. He does not struggle to preach. He said, but, but that day when he, he got the news that I was pregnant, my dad opened his mouth wide and nothing came out. Father grieves. Father grieves. Fatherhood comes with a lot of pain. Look at what Father Henry said. It does not surprise me at all that few people claim fatherhood for themselves. The pains are too obvious. The joys are too hidden. Women, especially mothers, think men don't care. Fathers don't care <laughs> because we are not so expressive. Our tear duct is so long. But do you know that in spite of the pain and the grief, whew, the father is still the most joyful personality you could ever know. And this is the reason why he is able to do that. Number two, the father is plenteous in mercy, in forgiveness. Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Luke 15, verse 20. Look at what the scripture says. So, when, when the f boy finally came to his senses and decided to return back home, he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, look at this, and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, 
and kissed him forgiveness when the boy was a long way off a long way off perfection a long way off obedience he was still smelly and stinking yet the father ran ran toward him and kissed him he had not bathed in the last i don't know how many weeks or months yet the father wrapped his mighty arm around him the father is plenteous in mercy. Father Henry said, it is true constant forgiveness that we become like the father. Forgiveness from the heart hmm, is very, very difficult. It is next to impossible, but the father does it. The father does it. Nehemiah chapter 9, look at what Nehemiah said. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 17. They refused to listen. They did, they did not remember your wondrous deeds which you had performed among them. So they became stubborn and appointed. He was recalling the, the waywardness, the stubbornness of the children of Israel. Over the years, they did not remember your wondrous deeds, which you had performed among them. So they became stubborn and appointed a leader to return to their slavery in Egypt. But look at the highlighted portion there. It said, but you are a God of forgiveness, gracious, compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness. You did not forsake them. That is the father that you and I have. And that is the father every father in the house, every father hearing me ought to be. Yes, fatherhood comes with a lot of pain, a lot of griefs, a lot of disappointment. But the father is plenteous in forgiveness. In fact, the father is so plenteous in forgiveness that one prophet had a problem with that. Jonah chapter 4 verse 2. Jonah prayed to the Lord and said, Please, Lord, was this not what I said while I was still in my own country? Therefore, in order to, for in order to prevent you from forgiving them, I went, I fled to Tarshish. I didn't want you to forgive the people of Nineveh. For I knew that you were gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abundant in loving kindness. One will relent concerning calamity. Somebody has a trouble with that. The father grieves, but the father is plenteous in forgiveness, in mercy. And finally this morning, Luke chapter 15, 22 to 24, the father said to his servant, quick, bring the best robe, put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a, a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. The father is very generous. The father is very generous. You will be wondering, the father divided everything, everything he had between the two boys to start with. And now he's letting go of whatever remains. And to his elder son, the father says in verse 31, all I have is yours. The father keeps nothing for himself. He pours himself out completely for all his children. Every good father pours out, releases, is generous. I went to the lady of the lake one time, one of the plaques I saw on the wall there reads, a father is a banker provided by nature. The father gives and keeps keeps giving. He just loves to do it. He's always spending on the children, investing in them. He doesn't so much care about himself. The well-being of the children is pleasure and satisfaction to him. That's the father we have. And that's the father we ought to be. My wife and I took our little guy for shopping for his grad dress yesterday. We spent over 300 for him. I struggled to buy a $25 shirt for myself. Mori read this scripture earlier on. He stole it from my slide. Doesn't have anything original. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 16, the Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one, he will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. That is the father you have. He cares for you. He loves you. He's forgiving. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He's generous. 
is very willing to give. You don't have to twist his hand before he releases anything. He's a loving father. I don't know what religion has told you about God. God is very willing to give and to bless. That is his desire. Generosity is the hallmark of fatherhood. And listen, friends, the father does not differentiate between the good and the bad children. Matthew chapter 5, 44 to 45. But I say to you, Jesus speaking here, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Listen, that you may be sons of your father in heaven. This is where I'm going. For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. He send rain on the just and on the unjust. That is the father. He doesn't discriminate. That because this one is not doing well, is rebellious, I will be mean, I will be bad to him, to her. God does not do that. He sends his rain to everyone. He sent his son to everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Even when the world is not seeking after him, he loves everybody. Somebody may want to say, but with that not encourage bad behavior. Listen to what Father Henry said. He said, God has no desire to punish them. They have already been punished excessively by their own inner and outer waywardness. As I conclude this morning, friends, I've presented to you the model father, the model father we should all be, a father that knows grief, yet very forgiven and abundant in generosity. And look at my final charge, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Look at what Jesus said. said. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. Father, in the house this morning, this is the charge to you. This is the expectation from you. This is what God is expecting from your life. This is the kind of Father. God wants you to be perfect as he is perfect. He wants you to be a father like him. A father that, yes, he knows griefs. He knows pain. But it's very forgiving and it's very generous. If you ask me, are you there yet? I am not. But I'm not what I'm supposed to be. You know the kind of life I had growing up, the kind of home I grew up, you know that I've made some progress. I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm not where God expects me to be yet. Praise God. And that's why I pray. That's why I keep trusting to release grace upon me every day. If you are here this morning, you are a father, you are a mother, you still struggle with forgiveness and generosity. We can pray together for deliverance, for healing. Let's pray. Here I am to wash, here I am to bow down, here I am to say, you're my God, you're together, Lord. Stand up. Let's pray together. All the fathers and father to be. Let's stand up. 
Thank you, Jesus. We pray for healing this morning. We pray for healing. There's many fathers that only know the pain, the grief, the sorrow of fatherhood. Father, I pray for your healing today. I pray for your healing today. There's many fathers that have been broken, that have been defeated, disappointed, that have been bruised, that have been frustrated. Father, I pray for healing today. In the mighty name of Jesus. As many fathers that only know brokenness, I pray for your healing. I pray for the healing balm to come upon their, their, their troubled soul, their wounded heart in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing, oh God. And some of us have been victims of bad, terrible fatherhood. I pray, oh God, for healings. I pray for healings. I pray for healings. As many with lost childhood, Father, I pray for healings. I pray for healings. In the name of Jesus, I pray for healings. And I pray, oh God, please make us what we ought to be. Like the everlasting Father. Like the loving Father. Like the compassionate Father that you are. Make us like you, oh God. Help us to be perfect as you are perfect. In the mighty name of Jesus. As many homes that are empty of fathers today. We pray again, oh God, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. Father, let there be restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give the Lord a hand this morning. God bless you. Be seated. 